Hey guys, it's Hink here. Today, we're gonna to be discussing what I feel are the top five mistakes that people are doing when they're starting PE or even some of the people that are more advanced. I'm hoping that with this list, you guys can learn and it'll help you do things more efficiently and honestly, more safely as well. So let's get right into it. So this is in no particular order, but number one is not measuring your stretched flaccid length, guys. I know everybody cares about erect length. I get that, guys, because that's, in my opinion, what matters the most. But if you are not measuring bone pressed, meaning you take your ruler, pressing it all the way into your pelvis and taking your penis and stretching it as far as you can and measuring what that distance is, if you are not measuring that, you're doing yourself a big disservice. Stretch flaccid length is gonna be the first thing that you are going to see start to increase. For me, I didn't really see erect gains for you know probably at least eight to 12 weeks, but within about, honestly, three weeks, I noticed that my stretch flaccid length had increased dramatically. Does stretch flaccid length actually correlate with erect length? Yes, it does. It is not a one-to-one, -one, guys. Some people, their stretch flaccid is more than their erect length. Some people, their stretch flaccid is less than their erect length. I think. For for most people, their stretch flash should, should be longer than their erect length. But that is something that you can measure, that you can track, that's actually going to have, it's going to be easier to focus on and you can see it and you can still be encouraged and that, that is definitive evidence that this is working for you if your stretch flaccid length is increasing. Number two, not taking starting documentation. Guys, I can't tell you how many people, number one, you know, and I'm not throwing shade here, but there are even some guys that are big names out here that lose a lot of credibility because they don't have good documented starting pictures. Now, this is not even about you sharing your journey, guys, but how are you going to know if you're growing if you just assume that you're a certain amount starting off or you don't document that? I will tell you that even now I have grown substantially. I've grown over an inch and a half since I started doing this about three and a half years ago. And even now, there are certain times where I look down, I'm like, this is not that big. And that, I mean, not, not really, guys, respectively. But then I look at an old picture and I'm like, holy shit, like this is way different. And without that like documented size, especially if you have a documented measurement that you can say, wow, I was this size starting out. And, you know, that's what, of course, I've documented. That's all over, you know, getting bigger. At least last time I checked, it was the number one upvoted post at the time of, of course, my meet with hundreds of thousands of dudes have seen. But it very clearly shows like this was my starting size and this is my current size now. You need to have that so you can maintain your measurements and you can see like, oh yes, you are growing and actually maintain your trajectory. And you should see that over time. Now, this is not about you sharing it, guys. This is for your personal information. And you can even store it in something in your phone like a like a photo vault that literally is on your phone that you can actually put a separate passcode in. Nobody else can access, okay? Or if you have an iPhone, there's the hidden folder app where you can put it and lock it. And so your files are hidden for only your face ID, guys. But it's very important that you document, not only for measuring growth, but also for measuring injuries. I can't tell you how frustrating it is when I get these guys that hit me up for injury coaching and they say, they hit me up on my Patreon, guys, Doc kink and they say you know I'm worried because my dorsal vein it looks a lot thicker and you know it moves around my thumb and you know I don't, I don't know if it was always like that I'm like you don't have documentation you don't know if it's always like that and they're like well well no but I think it feels different or I think it's this and guys without something to reference you you don't know what you don't know guys and it, you're just shooting yourself in the foot so even as far as change things like discoloration and this is something i talk about in my course guys but like even things like sensitivity you should take for lack of a better word different objects and test like okay with heat like oh how sensitive is my like the head of my penis to heat versus cold versus like a sharper touch versus a duller touch so you can actually get a gauge on your sensitivity so you can know whether or not you're losing sensitivity while you're doing pe i think that's especially important when people that are using something like an extender or even hanging that is going to put a lot of pressure on the glands of your penis but even if you're doing manual stretches so you have to document how you are starting and guys i just mentioned my course my course is live i talk about in detail it's over two hours of content certain points like this that don't get talked about enough that can actually save your ass down the line because you know exactly how it looked, how your veins look, how your sensitivity was. So you know if things are changing, it can help you know whether or not you need to take a break or not, guys. And of course, in addition to how to actually enlarge your junk. So if you're interested, check it out. Course is in the description.
Another thing, guys, is starting off too much too quickly. I get it, guys. You're here. Maybe you're discovering my channel for the first time. You're like, oh my gosh, there's actually published medical literature showing that it's possible to enlarge my penis. I want to get on this right away. I have people that hit me up for coaching and they say, you know, this is my routine. I'm doing joking and stretching and then I hang and then I extend and then I use a heat pad and then I extend and then I hang again and then I do clamping. And I'm just like, dude, that is way too much. More is not more, guys, especially starting off. I talk about this paper right here, Callie put it up for me, where they actually talk about how, especially how your, your collagen, your stretch receptors, they actually get conditioned to more pressure over time. Specifically in the paper, they're talking about actually the pulse of your heartbeat, but it is very important because when you don't have that exposure to pressure, when they expose the vessel all of a sudden to an increased pressure, it ruptures, guys. Now these are in graphs, okay? So I'm not saying your, your pee is gonna just rupture if you put it under pressure, but the same principle applies where you need your collagen to adapt to the stretch signal so it can actually become stronger throughout your penis and throughout your actual vasculature and even things like your smooth muscle. So you need to take it slow, especially in the beginning, so you don't hurt yourself. Now I'm not really an advocate for rest days in general, except in the beginning of your journey, guys. You need to take it slow at first to make sure you do not injure yourself. And I really hate bodybuilding metaphors for PE in general, but like the only thing that I actually agree with from that in, in this case is progressive overload when you're talking about first starting off versus advancing. When you're first starting off and you're pumping, I would say you wanna be between five to six inches of mercury, no more than that for the first two weeks. And then gradually you could increase to between six to eight inches of mercury, and then gradually increase to, you know, between ideally 10 and 12. I think that is the, that is the gain zone, guys. But you can't just start off and jump to 10 to 12. That's why people get things like petechia or the little like purple dots that develop on the penis because they are not conditioned to that pressure. It's very important, guys. Now this is one I still struggle with but don't compare yourself to others, okay? Comparison is the thief of joy. And I know I say that and I don't listen to it because you know BD puts a, post a video and it gets like 10,000 views and I post a video and it gets like 1,000 views and I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, I'm sincerely happy for him. I mean, he's my partner and everything, but still. But really, I just need to focus on being the best me that I can and that's certainly not an exception when it comes to things like your gains, guys. You know, Perv McSwerve is like, yeah, I gained like over two inches in the first like nine months of doing PE. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I think it was more than nine months. It was probably closer to 12 to 18 months if I remember correctly. But you know, that's that exceeded my gains. And I, instead of just being happy with the gains that I have made, I was like, this dude like freaking eclipsed my, my gains, allegedly. You know, I love you, perv. But the same thing goes with guys that are, you know, if you're all active on the subreddits, whether it be my subreddit, r slash hink, or, you know, my other subreddit getting bigger, if you see some guy and he's like, wow, in six weeks, I've gained a quarter of an inch and you've been doing this for six months and you still haven't got a quarter of an inch, it can be discouraging. But don't worry about that, guys. Be the best version of yourself. I need to start incorporating that into my, my little ending catchphrase because I do think that's most important. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. It matters about you being the best you you can be. And along with that, guys, you have to stop watching Prawn, okay? Prawn is terrible for you, and it gives you, even with the smoke and mirrors and angles that they use, they give you this unrealistic expectation of what an actual PP size is, okay? And you might be feeling good with yourself, and then you watch, like, a video, and you see Julio Gomez, and you're like, oh my god, I'm tiny, when you're really not. So just please don't watch prawn and definitely don't compare yourself to that. If you have to watch prawn, you need to watch a video with like average or even small size guys. You feel better about yourself and you actually are comparing to a more realistic standard. And finally guys, and I honestly don't know if this is the most important guys, but not taking citrulline, okay? You know, some of you might be opposed to taking supplements, whatever, that's fine. Let me just state very clearly, I don't care if you take any of my supplements, guys. You need to be on some form of citrulline. Why is that, you ask? Well, it's based on real data, okay? I've made several videos on the benefits of citrulline, but I'm gonna go through some of the highlights right now. So here's a paper right here that talks about the repair and recovery of the endothelial cells, the cells lining the blood vessels of the penis that are vitally important for erections, citrulline can help to reverse any kind of damage that's done. Guys, when we're doing B and we're pulling and tugging and some people are clamping and pumping, you can cause a lot of micro and macro trauma, okay? If you're not careful, you will develop permanent injury and potentially even fibrosis from this. You need something like citrulline to help you recover. 
So this paper here in ligated rat arteries, meaning they actually like cut the rat arteries and then were testing how they recovered and what happened to the smooth muscle in the penis. They found that the citrulline improved erection quality, it prevented fibrosis and it helped preserve the smooth muscle of the penis. This paper here showed a six, a six fold increase in erectile function, guys, in erection quality with the use of citrulline. So why might that be important? Guys, erection quality matters, especially when you're doing things for girth, like pumping or like clamping. So anything that's going to give you an edge could literally help expedite gains. More importantly, it's about maintaining the health, but absolutely the better your erection quality, the better your potential for gains. This study here showed major improvements in erection quality and decreased risk of fibrosis and decreased rates of fibrosis with the use of citrulline. And guys, this paper here I'm including just because I, I happened to go back on getting bigger and even my subreddit, and I was just so disappointed. There was a question about citrulline versus citrulline malate, guys. So like in this paper here, citrulline malate is especially important for any kind of athletic exercise. Malic acid is part of one of the pathways that helps create energy in your body. So it is very important for actually working out. Malic acid does nothing for absorption, okay? It's not about getting the citrulline to absorb better. It's literally about improving your athletic performance, whether that be your like after hours activities, kind of before bed activities. It can help with your endurance and your stamina with that, or of course, working out in the gym. So that's why malic acid is included or malate is included in most pre-workouts. And that's why you often find malate two to one in, or citrulline malate two to one. Now the two to one is important because two to one means that for every three grams of citrulline malate, two grams are citrulline and one gram is malate. If you're trying to get five grams of citrulline, you can't just take five grams of citrulline malate because there's a, a third of it is gonna be malic acid. Now, that being said, guys, you know, with Vigor here, we specifically say that there is 5,000 milligrams or five grams of citrulline and then two grams of malic acid. So that is, you know, essentially a two to one ratio, but more important guys, and I'm not gonna have Kelly put up the paper here, but there's also a paper showing that a combination of L-arginine and L-citrulline is more effective than either by themselves. Please, for the love of Christ, tell me you're not just taking L-arginine by itself. But the fact of the matter is a combination works best. That's why in Vigor, guys, we have something that's called nitrosagene, which is actually a more bioavailable, meaning when you take it, unlike regular arginine where 80% of it goes immediately to waste, the nitrosagene actually is more bioavailable and it doesn't get broken down. And that's why you can get a much better pump, whether it be a PE pump or actually a pump in the gym, guys. So if you're interested in Vigor or any of our supplements that are available all on LeviathanSupps.com, they're also available on Amazon. The links are in the description, but I don't care if you buy my products, guys. Just please, if you're going to be doing PE, I don't care where you get it, get some form of citrulline and use it while you're doing PE. You need to be doing, I would say, between three to five grams of citrulline prior, about 30 minutes prior to your actual PE workout as you can tolerate it, meaning as long as it doesn't make you lightheaded. And it's also, I think, vitally important that you take at least a scoop or a half a scoop before bed. This is gonna help with recovery and it's gonna help stimulate more nighttime erections, which is vital for your overall penile health. If you haven't seen my video on the importance of nocturnal erections, you really need to check that out because it's it can literally be an important health metric. There's that guy, Brian Johnson, not the liver king, Brian Johnson, but the vampire guy that wants to live forever, Brian Johnson. He literally wears a device on his peepee -pee measuring his nocturnal erections because he understands how vitally important it is for penile function and for overall health as a marker of your overall health. So guys, you really should be doing that a scoop before PE and a half a scoop to a scoop before bed. I hope this was helpful, guys. Thank you for watching this far. Remember, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement. Be the best version of yourself, but remember, you are enough just as you are. Thanks guys for watching. If you want to support me in any way, you can reach me on my Patreon. The link is in the description below. Of course, all of the supplements that I take, I'm including three new supplements, our Safeguard, our Shield. So Safeguard is for soft tissue support, preventing fibrosis. Our Shield is our nerve support, helping you recover from nerve damage and prevent nerve damage and even increase your sensitivity. And then our Fortitude, which is actually our erection quality booster made with literally natural supplements that are in fact phosphodiesterase 5 
five inhibitors like Viagra. Um, and of course, if you like what Cali does and you want to support him, uh, we have a wallpaper pack um, that you can buy uh, that'll give you a bunch of wallpapers. And you know, the, all those proceeds, just so you know, guys, they go directly to Cali. I don't get any of that. If you like Cali and what he does, support your boy. All right, guys, until the next one, peace and love.